So last video, we looked at what happens when um, I would get hurt. If I get hurt, bacteria would enter into my body. Um, the enzyme would notice that there is um, invaders coming in. And so they will release prostaglandins. And when prostaglandins is released, it will try to kill. It will help the body kill all the bacteria. But it will also cause fever, cause pain, and cause inflammation. So if I were to take aspirin, what aspirin does is it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis, which basically means that it'll tell COX to the enzyme, which is COX enzyme, it'll tell the COX enzyme to stop releasing or stop making prostaglandins. And when prostaglandins has, has stopped being made, I won't feel pain, I won't feel inflammation, and I won't feel fever. Okay, so we have two types of enzymes, COX-1 and COX-2. When I take aspirin, what it does is it tells the enzyme, the COX enzyme, to stop releasing prostaglandins. When prostaglandin is not released, the pain, the fever, and the inflammation goes away. And that's the mechanism of action. That's how aspirin works. If you take a small dose of aspirin, the half-life is two to three hours. What that means is that it takes two to three hours for half of the aspirin to um, be released from the body. So in two to three hours, we won't feel the full effect of aspirin. We'll just feel half effect of aspirin in our body. So again, aspirin stops pain. So analgesic means pain. It's also antipyretic, which means Fever, it stops fever. It's also anti-inflammatory, which means it stops inflammation. And one unique thing about aspirin is that it's a blood thinner. So your blood becomes very a lot more thin when you take aspirin. And this is unique to aspirin because the other drugs that we'll look at, they're not a blood thinner. So aspirin is the only drug that we're looking at in the non-opioid category that is a blood thinner. Now, when someone takes aspirin, one of the most common side effects that we hear is that their stomach gets upset. And the reason why their stomach gets upset is because maybe they took aspirin on an empty stomach. Aspirin should always be taken on a full stomach so that it doesn't upset the, um, the stomach. One of the actually um, thing about that I learned about aspirin is that or actually, I should say, one of the interesting things I learned about prostaglandins, so I go back to this slide, prostaglandins is really good because it actually protects the tummy. It protects the stomach. When we look at our stomach, we have the lining of the stomach, so the mucus lining, the outline of the stomach. It's uh, protected by prostaglandins. So prostaglandins make some stuff that protects the lining of the stomach. And now when you take aspirin, what's happening is because you have no prostaglandins, there's not going to be anything protecting the lining of the stomach. So that's why when someone who takes um, aspirin, they may say that their stomach gets upset, and that's very normal because there, um, there's nothing that can protect their stomach. There's n the lining of the stomach is not protected because prostaglandin has stopped being produced. Prostaglandin helps protect the stomach. So that's why we say if you take aspirin on an empty stomach, it's really going to irritate your stomach. If you take it on a full stomach, it won't irritate it as much. Bleeding is another side effect of aspirin. And remember, bleeding um, is common because it's a blood thinner. So if I'm taking aspirin regularly and I cut myself, I'm probably going to be bleeding a lot longer than someone who does not take aspirin. And then the Rye syndrome. This it happens in children. If kids take aspirin, they could get liver swelling and their brain could also get, um, you know, swollen as well, which is known as the RISE syndrome. So please, please, please never give aspirin to kids. It can be very um, harmful. So again, if you overdose with aspirin, you could get nausea or vomiting. Your stomach can get upset. You could also get something called tinnitus, which is ring, ear, or ringing in the ears. Okay? When your ears start ringing, and headache and dizziness are also some other um, toxic effects of aspirin. 
never ever give children if you absolutely absolutely have to if doctors have to they will give an extremely low dose it's important to also educate the parents not to give your ch the child aspirin because it can cause rise syndrome and if you take this medication which is known as warfarin warfarin is a blood thinner and now if you combine that with aspirin you're gonna get a lot of bleeding especially if you cut yourself. So something to be very careful of. Don't take warfarin and aspirin together um, because it could cause severe bleeding. So to recap, the reason why people would take aspirin is for analgesic effect, so for pain, for anti-inflammatory. And so dentists may prescribe aspirin. If the clients are coming in and they're in pain, they, one of the medications they may prescribe is aspirin because it helps with inflammation, especially if there's inflammation in the area where they're complaining of pain, and it also helps with pain as well. There are people who take low-dose aspirin regularly. So low-dose aspirin is 81 milligrams, and they would take it every day. And the reason why they would take it every day is to prevent heart attacks. So if someone is prone to getting heart attacks or, you know, prone to having cardiovascular disease, they will be given daily low dose of aspirin because it's a blood thinner, so blood can pump or go around in the heart a lot more effectively to reduce the chance of heart attacks. But even people who are 45 to 79 years of age and they have no history of heart attacks, doctors will also tell them, you know what, just take aspirin. There's no harm. They'll have to obviously do the risk versus benefits, but usually they'll say take aspirin because usually there's not that much of a risk, especially in low dose. And again, the reason for that is to prevent any heart attacks and any cardiovascular disease. So even in healthy people, aspirin may be prescribed. Now let's look at NSAIDs. And NSAID basically stands for the N is non-steroidal, A is anti I, inflammatory, D for drugs. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, when we see non-steroidal, let's kind of examine that uh, word. So in anatomy and physiology class, you may have learned about the cell membrane and how there are two components to the cell membrane. We have the hydrophilic, which is at the top, and we have the hydrophobic, which is in the middle. And hydrophilic basically means that they like lipids. Hydrophobic means they like water. So mm -hmm. steroids are lipids. Steroids have fat in them. So steroids, when they when we have steroids, it's really easy because um, it's the steroids. If you have a direct steroid here, it could easily go down and enter into the cell or enter into your body. But when you have a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, it's not that easy. It won't go down. Because non-steroidal means it's not made out of lipid, it's not made out of fat. And when it's not made out of fat, it won't go down as easily. There's other ways that it goes down. So when we say non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, really all that means is that the drug is not an easy pass. It won't easily go through. There are some other methods that needs to be taken for the drugs to pass through the membrane. And that's basically what it means. So NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They're non-steroidal, they're drugs that doesn't easily pass through the cell membrane, and they are also anti-inflammatory, which means, which means they help with inflammation. So if your toe is inflamed, an NSAID drug will help with the inflammation. And how does it help? Again, it tells COX-1 and COX-2 to stop producing prostaglandins, and when prostaglandins has um, stopped being produced, we um, would get less of a fever, less of pain, and less of inflammation. So when we take an NSAID, it peaks in one to two hours. So as soon as you take it, within one to two hours, we start to feel a lot better. And remember, it works the same way. It tells the COX enzyme, COX-1 and COX-2, to stop producing prostaglandin. When prostaglandin has been, is not produced, it stops pain, it stops fever, it stops uh, inflammation. Sometimes, though very rare, you could get some irritation in the stomach. But remember, aspirin is usually the one that gives you the inflammation. Uh, 
unlike aspirin, the NSAID, so um, when we're looking at, for example, Advil, it's a blood, it could cause blood clotting, which means that it, it, the blood is now thick, right? So it could clot a lot more easily, which means it may not pump in the heart as much, increasing your chance of, you know, heart attacks or stroke. This is very rare, but it could happen. So you could get heart attacks or strokes if you take Advil. It could affect your kidney as well. So people who have kidney disease, they will not be prescribed NSAIDs. They will not be prescribed Advil. And sometimes when you take Advil, you could get, so inside your mouth, you could get ulcerative stomatitis. So it's basically when you have ulcers, very painful inside your mouth. The gums could also have ulcers and xerostomia. Dry mouth is very common for people who take Advil. We don't want people to take this drug, to take Advil, if they have asthma. Because when if they have asthma, what happens is um, sometimes when you take Advil, it causes bronchospasms, which means it basically constricts their airway, and so it's harder for you to breathe. So we say if you have asthma, not to take it. Cardiovascular disease, so if you're at a risk of heart attack or getting a stroke, it's not a blood thinner, right? So it, blood could get thick and it may, you know, clot or it may not pump around the heart as effectively. And also anytime you have kidney disease, we don't want you to take that it could cause more harm than good and so this is probably i was probably the number one drug um, prescribed in dentistry for pain okay there's yes there's aspirin but there's also um advil and so this was the very common NSAIDs that we're looking at. So Advil, also known as Motrin, they have a half-life of two hours. That means when you take Advil, within two hours, half of the Advil will be gone from your body. When you take Advil, it'll start to work in half an hour. So if you have dental pain in half an hour, you should feel some relief. And it lasts four to six hours long. Another drug that falls under the NSAIDs category is Aleve or Naproxen. Naproxen is a drug that helps with pain, it helps with fever, and it also helps with inflammation. Tylenol is not uh, part of the NSAIDs because if you look at the word NSAIDs, it says anti-inflammatory, so it's a drug that helps with inflammation. Well, Tylenol is only analgesic and antipyretic. It's only a pain reliever and a fever reliever it's not an anti-inflammatory reliever so if someone comes to the dental office and they're in pain and their gums are inflamed or that uh, you know the area around the tooth is inflamed the doctor will say no, will not say you take Tylenol because a Tylenol will not help with the inflammation instead the doctor and the dentist would say take Advil or take aspirin because they both have anti-inflammatory effects now, people who take acetaminophen, people who take Tylenol, they are at risk for liver damage. They could be at risk for kidney damage. And also, people who drink alcohol should not take Tylenol. And the reason why they say that is because alcohol mixed with Tylenol could make um, the Tylenol even more toxic. And so you could have an overdose of Tylenol, which we don't want. So people who are um, complaining that aspirin causes tummy upset, that if aspirin causes their stomach to be upset, they should be given Tylenol. And children can also take Tylenol. It's, um, it's completely safe. This is a recap of everything we've talked about. So there are four non-opioid drugs that we looked at. When we look at aspirin, actually, let's look at this all together. If you have a headache, you could take any of these medications. If you have an inflammation, you could take aspirin, you could take Advil, you could take Aleve or Naproxen, but Tylenol or acetaminophen will not work. So it is not for inflammation. Aspirin can cause an upset stomach, can cause heartburn, it can cause indigestion that we talked about. Advil, not so much. Naproxen, a little bit, um, you know, a pain in the tummy, but not so much. And acetaminophen will probably not cause any pain in the tummy. 
some things to think about is that aspirin is a blood thinner, right? And also that is linked to rise disease. So no children should be given aspirin because it can affect their liver and brain. Ibuprofen, sometimes the side effect is that it can cause heart problems. So as I said, um, people who are at risk for stroke or heart attack should not be given ibuprofen because it's not a blood thinner. You want a blood thinner. You want the blood to be pumping in the heart nicely, not ibuprofen because the blood will be a lot more thicker. And acetaminophen. Tylenol is very easy to overdose on and it can cause liver damage, right? So we want to be very careful when we take Tylenol and not overdose ourselves. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening.